Hey folks, you know what's today? Today is a good day to do an update on the DIY power wall. All right, so where are we with this thing right here? As you know, if you've been following, I made a video which I show where how to make this thing. It got about a half a million views. Then I made another video in which I, I said I was gonna use a UPS to be able to invert the 48 volts, uh, 50 something volts that this thing has into usable AC power, uh, 110, right? And the reason I was gonna use a UPS is because they're, well, they're dirt cheap. And so I got one, I shot a video with me trying it on, but I couldn't get it to work. So, that was the last update. Today, I basically here to say, tell you that <laughs> I got a second one and it also doesn't work. So, until I can get my hands on another unit, um, it seems like I got nothing for you. But here is a DIY power Tesla wall that it's actually working. Say hi to everyone. <laughs> Everybody knows Michael. Hey everyone. From EV West. And yeah. I believe this is the world's first document I know there are other oh yeah I'm walls sure. out there yeah and maybe there are pictures floating around but no one's ever talked about them or have like a very detailed right. uh, explanation of what it does and I think the only so, thing that makes a difference is really the Tesla I mean people have been yeah. doing backup systems you know since the equipment came out decades ago um, you know there's guys uh, there's uh, you know like Puerto Escondido the surf fields down in Mexico where people are literally living off of little systems like this albeit the cheaper ones the 12 volt and 24 volt uh, you know since we're charging the cars at a much higher current to get the current down out of the battery we had to go up in voltage yeah okay so run us through your system here. right this is the solar <laughs> so we're, we're solar we're completely uh, get a little bit closer because of the microphone and something yeah, so all the energy comes from solar. It's completely off-grid. So uh, these tubes here actually go to our sets of panels on the roof. We had uh, nine panels and we have nine more coming, so we're going to have a total of 18 panels, about six kilowatt off the roof. Um, that lead comes into here and we have some fuses uh, off the panels right there. And then you can see that it just goes out over to our solar charge controller. Uh, this uh, drops the voltage from roughly about 90 volts to about 60 volts and then that comes back into the pack back through another high current fuse and then back into the the actual battery pack now inside here we have cutoff switches and fuses as well so the fuse in this box is protecting our inverter so from that point uh, the energy kind of gets split as it's needed uh, like we're charging right now but we're pulling about 20 amps off of here and about 100 off of here for a combined 120 amps, depending on what we're charging at. You can see right now we're at 5.3 kilowatt. So basically, after the charge controller through the fuse panel into the box, we charge our 33 kilowatt hour pack. Um, these are basically 18650s in a 15S configuration, and parallel would be something like uh, 220 or something like that. I haven't done the numbers yet, but so then out of the battery pack, uh, through the fuse box again, down into the inverter, and uh, from the inverter to our 220 volt uh, supply to our charging station, our EVSE level two. And uh, that's it. And um, I think the only thing that upsets me about this is, is really how easy it, it was, you know, because like we were talking earlier, we could disconnect the solar here, take this backing board off the wall and deliver this anywhere. We could put it in the back of the pickup truck, drive somewhere, set up some solar panels, and we're a power company. You know, we can charge our cars or whatever we want to do. So for now, we're just charging cars. We have some extra outlets here that we can run some shop tools with. And, um, you know, there's been some power outages. Now that it's fire season two, we could have some uh, extended power outages. So it's kind of nice to be able to know that we're, uh, you know, we have a, a backup plan. And uh, that's about it. It's really pretty straightforward. I think, should we open up the box? Yeah, the I think. Okay. So this is all off the, sh off the shelf. These are products that are available, uh, you know, every other major retailers and stuff. And so the interesting thing is that these work with available batteries that Michael has, which are the Tesla smart car batteries. And so those are pretty exciting because we're using them in our cars. But now here, for the first time now, we're also using them to store energy and to charge the cars too. So, how many? so we have, you know, 11 modules, three kilowatts per module, 33 kilowatt total. 
our nominal voltage is 57. We hover between uh, 50 and 62, 63. Which we um, consider 48 for... Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. for the guy still on lead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we have an emergency cutoff switch down here, and then of course we have a fuse over here. We also have our little BMS connectors in here, and we have the tool. Um, I actually borrowed your design for that tool and built one for ourselves. And we can go through and kind of check the balance of the cells. And the nice thing about that is it's not full-time monitoring, so there's no full-time drain on the battery. We can just periodically do like a maintenance check. Uh, and then everything's in a certified NEMA 4 uh, enclosure. How so, many of the of Elon's power wall a unit so would take I'm to not, make up this? You know, I'm not really sure. It's 7.4 is what he's selling. Four oh. to five power walls or something yeah. like that. Um, and we might expand this later. You know, we just started charging all of the shop cars off of it. And like I was telling you earlier, we're actually creating a little bit more energy than we're using right now. This time anyways, until we wire up more stuff in the shop, we're fine. We actually uh, did our calculations of what we're using and came right in. And it, uh, our actual usage is pretty much right what we calculated. So. Uh, we don't drain it on a daily basis, you know, 33 kilowatt hour, even though uh, we're charging a truck right now with a 54 kilowatt hour pack, we're really just going to top it off. Um, yeah. So we won't really get into this much We'll maybe use, you know, 5, 10 kilowatt hour off the top. And then for those obviously that are thinking like, what are the major differences between this system and then this, the store-bought package Tesla Powerwall? Oh, well, this one's running. <laughs> this is right and it's available. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like, look, why did you and I get into electric cars? And why do we have, both of us, electric Volkswagens? Yeah, we because couldn't we couldn't one. get them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so mm -hmm. we just said, well, let's do this. And I think that's why we get along so well, because we're like, well, screw this, let's do it. Let's you do know? it. And yeah. so this was fun. I mean, we didn't, you know, again, we're, the only thing that we have in here that's for sale is the batteries. I don't sell these, don't try to get me to build you one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Jehu will sell you all the parts and he'll help <laughs> with that. Uh, but really, uh, this was just a selfish project. We wanted to be sustainable and truly say we're sustainable. You know, we're the guys known for putting out the videos and pretty much every EV show we did a big fat burnout in the video. Yeah. And so it's kind of nice to kind of on the other side of that have something that's sustainable. So you can kind of have fun and drive fast cars, but uh, you know, really just completely limit uh, where you get that, that energy from, you know, and keep it uh, sustainable. It's, it turns out this is not much different. Uh, technically speaking, this has water cooling, but we don't even need it. I mean, no. he didn't even connect it no. because at the loads that he's pulling off of this, these batteries are, you know, having an easy day. Yeah. Um, the cables do get a little warm, you know, it might be useful in the winter. <laughs> yeah, which that could also, if it becomes a problem, you could also just get thicker cables in yeah. there, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, technically speaking, there's not much difference here. Like, Elon's Powerwall is just a box of batteries. Yeah, it's got some fancy... It looks sexier. Yeah, it looks yeah, sexy, it looks, it looks like a piece of art. Yeah, yeah. There, there might be some BMS yeah. thing in there that we and, don't... And we're kind of pushing the limits of calling this a Tesla Powerwall. I mean, these, yeah. this is actually just a Panasonic 18, NCR 18650 battery. So that's really all it is. It's, it's Panasonic batteries in here. Um, you know, the nice thing about the sustainable kind of theme is these are recycled. These came out of cars that are no longer being used. They had no purpose, um, but they, you know, instead of being destined for the chipper, yeah. we're actually giving them a second life. And at the duty cycle that they're running right now, I could see this lasting, I mean, no problem, 15, 20, 25 years. Like, honestly, yeah. no problem. And the nice thing with American Solar, almost all the products have a 25 year warranty. So the panels are warrantied for 25 years, the inverter and all the other solar components. So we really have something here for the next you know, quarter century, we're gonna be making free fuel. And you know there's always gonna be electric car parked out here. Now, we were talking about this earlier at lunch, like why would you do this, you know? Why spend the money and the time and everything and everybody has a unique situation, but for us, we're leasing the building. We, we're growing and we keep expanding and expanding. And we're talking about maybe moving out into this location to another one. Now we're not grid tie. Again, we have no grid tie connections whatsoever. So we didn't have to go through any permitting process. We simply got permission from the landlord to put uh, panels on the roof and we didn't do any roof penetration. So we did a surface mount panel. I think you caught some drone footage of that. And uh, so we can, pick this up and take it to a new building if we move. And we don't have to worry about permits, we don't have to worry about a huge you know, capital investment in a system that we're gonna leave in a building when we move. 
Um, other people have other reasons. They kind of want the, the backup power. Some guys are selfish with their energy. They don't want to put it back into the grid. They want to put it back into a battery pack. Um, but there's, you know, there's a few, few applications for this that it just, it's very fitting. It's a, there's a few angles depending on where you want. If you want to do the green thing or you just want to save some money or invest, yeah. right? I mean, this, this cost has a, an upfront cost, but then in the long run, it's going to yeah. save you some money. Um, and it's just fun, you know, if you're kind of a technical guy and kind of geeky like us. Or a car guy and just or a car guy. To yeah. ass and do burnouts. <laughs> right? yeah. 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 It's nice. It's kind of like a water tower or something. It's nice knowing we have a reserve, you know, yeah. it's here. It's and here. Uh, something happens again, a power outage or something like that. Now we do have connections so we can plug tools in and lights. Yeah. Uh, if this is essentially a, like yeah. an ul the ultimate UPS. This yeah. is 30 kilowatt hours, 33 kilowatt hours, yeah. right? Yeah. Of backup storage. I mean, yeah. if you need it to run these computers, whatever you, yeah. you have it right here because yeah. it's just right. charging every day right. yeah and you know it's probably worth pointing out too since we're running at the individual module voltage we can very easily expand this right because we can just add modules in parallel or take them away so we're not breaking a series chain of connections we're not changing the voltage or anything we're simply adding capacity to it yeah. so if we wanted to you know make another box put it on the other side and double go to 66 kilowatt hours I mean that could be done probably in just a couple hours yeah if you have all the tools if you have all the materials yeah. you know you just put this together I mean what would you estimate the time you did this you know not uh, counting the waiting for the parts yeah the, well you know uh, the other the real business of selling you know EV car components keeps us busy and again this was a side job so I'd come in and do an hour here and there on the weekends and um, and just really uh, took our time with it it'd, it'd be tough to say but I, I would imagine you could do this whole thing and if you worked all weekend you could probably do this in a weekend in a weekend yeah. um, so, and we're pretty you know we have like the water jet of aluminum bars that these hang off of we'll give that file out if somebody wants to do you know we're real DIY ourselves I mean that's how we got into this so we really want to encourage that and you know like I said I don't want to come off as like we're trying to sell this because we actually don't yeah. sell this we just want to yeah. show you guys you what you can do and what we're actually doing I mean we're actually right now charging this car that we just drove to a Volkswagen show <laughs> yeah. and we're recharging it up and uh, um, you know at a five kilowatt rate from the sun from the sun yeah. and our sun's only energy. coming in well it's, it's low right now so we're only getting two kilowatt off the sun you yeah. know, one or two kilo off the sun and then the other three, four coming from the power wall. And that's the best thing about it. It's very dynamic. It can load share. Uh, yeah. You know, it's late in the day now, but earlier in the day, you know, pulling uh, a couple couple plus two, three kilowatt out of the solar charger. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for some of these uh, cars that charge at 3.3 kilowatt, you pretty much do the whole thing without impacting your battery capacity at all. Yeah. And for those of you who are going to say, that you're wasting a lot of energy by having the panels flat on the roof. We're still, you're still producing more energy than... than, than yeah, you know, well, that's yeah, I right. mean, what's the definition of wasting something for free, Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but you know, on, on that note, um, a friend of mine that works in the solar industry, uh, we were discussing it and he has the little GPS thing that knows the azimuth and the sun angle and all that. And doing some calculations, um, you don't take as much of a hit as you think you might now we're I mean we're close to the border we're down here in San Diego right so this doesn't hold true for other people at uh, higher latitudes um, but for us it was great because it's a money saver and I think the actual figure is something like five percent flat versus tilted as opposed to like doing the tilted thing and like right. spending in permits and right. you know drilling things and if you and and actually if you get the ideal angle for most of the year during the summer you actually produce less because you'll have a more incidental angle oh I see, I see. yeah and this is here so this is what my friend tells me he's been in solar for 10 plus years or whatever uh he's a real knowledgeable guy and, and he's very fascinated by this too because uh we just kind of built it and i think he was like whoa you guys just, just did it you have to don't ask permission it's just, no, like, just you know, like, yeah. Right, right yeah which is great like and all you guys watching out there you guys can yeah. do this thing you know it's yeah. like um and so i know i've been kind of lagging on my project <laughs> because i have so many other interests uh but i wanted to show you one that was done here you know it's working he got it done yeah essentially in a weekend you know he spread it over a few weekends but it's done okay yeah so how okay. does this compare to a Tesla? Right. so you know this okay so it always comes up price what does this cost what does this cost so 
Uh, we sell these modules, the price is fluctuating, but right now they're around, you know, two to $300 per kilowatt hour. Uh, so it just, you know, kind of multiply that by how many kilowatt hours you need. Uh, this uh, enclosure, you know, we make battery boxes out of aluminum and do all sorts of fabrication, but I just kind of wanted something store-bought that looked really nice. So this is about uh, $650 and I think it cost another 50 bucks to get it here. Um, the inverter, I think we paid about $2,300, $2,400 for it, something like that. Uh, this is uh, an older model. Schneider now makes them all under the Connects name and they paint them white. And the older ones that are beige are cheaper. So get an older one. Get an older one. Um, this I bought used, so it was scratched and scuffed and had some holes in it already. But I wasn't going to pay a lot of money for a simple connection box. I think I got this on eBay used for like 40 bucks or something. Most everything in here is stuff that we do sell. The cable, the fuse holders, the actual fuses. Um, so we just pulled that out of inventory. Uh, I don't even know what the price is. It's cheap. This is all cheap stuff. You know, yeah. little tiny fuse holders and stuff. Um, the control panel runs a couple hundred dollars and this allows us to program our target uh, charge voltages. Um, this we pulled out of inventory because we actually do sell this. It's Kiba. It's a nice unit. I think we sell it for like 500 bucks or something. Uh, and then this was pretty cheap. I got it up for 330. Okay. And I think the street, you know, the list price is a lot more expensive, but on the street you can get a, a nice MPPT, 60 amp, 150 volt for, eh, you know, 300 bucks, something. Which like is a, a question that I get a lot in the channels, like, right. what do you use to charge, you know, I don't yeah. know, 15S battery yeah. pack out of solar? Right. And so I, I always not know what to say because I haven't done that and I'm not there in my project. But here it is. This is what you can use. This thing works. It has variable voltage, uh, and you can adjust it to work with these Tesla modules. And you know, just a quick note on this: the MPPT is um, oh, maximum power point tracking, right? And so it just basically maximizes not only the voltage, or the, uh, but also the wattage, right? It's trying to maximize the output without uh, too much voltage sag. And so you really need a specialized uh, solar charger to hook up to the panel. But you're going to help folks course. find some of the stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, links, you know, we'll make, we'll like make a list of all the stuff, put it out there, and, you know, give you guys some links where you can find it, and then you can, guys can do your shopping, and, you know, you can get batteries from Michael. Michael yeah. has tons of batteries we'll sell them. that <laughs> need to be put to good use. Yeah. Uh, and we have some more batteries coming in. We got, uh, you know, we've been playing, we've got uh, good, good inventory of the Volt batteries. Uh, we've been bringing some uh, Fiat 500Es. Uh, from the auto wreckers to so get some Fiat batteries in now. Um, nice oh, right. assortment of different batteries. Even yeah. more bad. Yeah, and there's some pouch cells. We played with some of those uh, unmarked pouch cells that are new and interesting. And so oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really exciting times. A lot of neat stuff coming So down. for all the battery needs, you know, contact yeah. Michael. Come to the website, yeah. uh, evwest.com. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Sure. Thanks. This is DIY Powerwall. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Bye. Wow, apparently that's how you crash a drill. Dang. No. I did crash it once before. Oh, there's this thing, this rubber seal popped out. Oh yeah. Inside Took impact, so just don't, just be careful with that battery. Yeah. It'll, nah. It'll fucking pop off later on. I've had it happen on RC stuff. Oh really? My name is Jehu and I am a LA based YouTuber and blogger have come to realize that you need three main tools. Good camera, good microphone, and a good tripod. There are tons of good cameras out there. Rode creates some of the best camera top mic. So the only problem is the tripod. Like everyone else, I used a octopus looking tripod. Sadly, those tripods just don't work for people like us that are using full-size DSLRs or mirrorless cameras like the one I'm using here. Together, you and I, we can make this happen. We can make the first tripod that is specifically designed for vloggers.